these are the top 10 films of 1953. When I say top 10, I mean my personal favourite films of 1953. Cheers. In at number 10, Shane. This classic western has excellent location photography in Wyoming and tells the story of a mysterious man, Shane, Call me Shane. who arrives uh, in a sort of small farming community who saves the day from a bunch of people who are trying to be bullied off their land. And people fall head over heels for this guy, mostly the men. Shane? Shane's no Shane. A little boy is particularly enamoured with Shane. I just love Shane. He's so good. My Shane! And people can't stop saying his name. Shane. 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 Shane, 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 In at number nine, Starlag 17. Billy Wilder directs this prisoner of war camp comedy. Uh, not camp comedy, but... Uh... How about you, Hansel? You look like Cary Grant. Set in a prisoner of war camp in World War II, uh, the story follows a bunch of American soldiers in Starlag 17 who are desperate to escape, but whose plans keep being foiled by either a rat amongst them or a German spy. William Holden plays the cocky prisoner who sort of gets whatever he wants and manages to still live quite a luxurious life. He won the Oscar for his performance and bizarrely seems to play exactly the same character in Bridge on the River Kwai. And let's say you make it to Switzerland. Let's say to the States. So what? They ship you out the Pacific, slap you in another plane, you get shot down again. Only this time you wind up in a Japanese prison camp. Billy Wilder is, of course, an astonishing director, and William Holden is absolutely captivating and plays the, the, the cocky American soldier brilliantly. In at number eight, Ugetsu. This Japanese period film directed by Kenji Mizuguchi uh, tells the story of two married couples uh, during a period of war and the choices they make and what happens to them. Uh, one man goes off to sell pots and is seduced by a sort of ghost-like, terrifying woman who's trying to seduce him. The other husband goes off to try and become a famous samurai. Uh, and as is so often the case in Mizuguchi's films, the women suffer. They suffer because men do what they want and go off and do selfish things. And the women who sort of stay at home and and, and are left to fend for themselves in this wartime period. A, a really interesting film. In at number seven, From Here to Eternity. Set in an army barracks on Hawaii mere weeks or months before the Pearl Harbor attack, this film tells the story of a bunch of soldiers and other people who live at the barracks uh, and the drama of their lives. Montgomery Cliff plays a former boxer uh, who now just, just wants to be a member of the army but who's the head of the the station is desperate to get him back into boxing so that uh, basically they can win a boxing competition uh, and he refuses until he's just repeatedly bullied during training by his fellow soldiers. Burt Lancaster has a famous sex scene on a beach. There must be sand in every nook and cranny. Frank Sinatra bounced back from a career low uh, playing a scene-stealing character, sort of mischievous, alcoholic, violent, but incredibly likeable soldier. It's reported that the Mafia tried to get him the job, and that's where the famous horse's head sequence comes from in The Godfather. Uh, I think it's rather telling that the director of the film, Fred Zinnemann, said, the legend about a horse's head having been cut off is pure invention. So the horse's head didn't happen, but he doesn't say anything about mafia involvement not happening. 
<laughs> That's what you say, buddy. When the attack on Pearl Harbor finally happens, it's so exciting and well done. In number six, The Big Heat. This pitch black film noir directed by Fritz Lang is so twisted. It stars Glenn Ford as a no-nonsense cop who's by the book and trying to do the right thing. When his family is hurt due to his by the book actions, Glenn Ford goes on a warpath against the criminal empire in this unnamed city. Lee Marvin plays a thug who basically gets off on torturing women. Gloria Graham is excellent as a, as a mobster's girlfriend who eventually is scarred and also goes on a warpath. Really dark and twisted. Excellent stuff. As we're halfway through the list, let's talk about some other notable releases in 1953. Disney released Peter Pan, where there's a scene where Tinkerbell is worried about the size of her ass and then literally can't get out of a drawer due to said size of ass. Marlon Brando starred as, or in The Wild One, uh, where he plays a, a badass biker in a, in a fancy hat. This is clearly one of those films written by old people who were just terrified of the youth. These are some of the least threatening bikers I've ever seen. There's even a sequence where they seem to ride around on pogo sticks. Vincent Price starred in the original House of Wax. I'm sure James Cameron saw House of Wax as a young child and saw just the potential that 3D had. You really feel like you're there, all the things that I love about 3D. Well, there's someone with a bag of popcorn. Close your mouth, it's the bag I'm aiming at. Not your tonsils. Here she comes. Well, look at that, it's in the bag. In number five, Roman Holiday. This incredibly charming film tells the story of a princess from a fake country who, while on a visit to Rome, escapes uh, from her duties uh, and, and endless sort of parties and meeting people and runs into Rome and has a wild experience with Gregory Peck. Uh, Gregory Peck pretends to, to be a friend and not know who she is, but he's actually a, a reporter trying to get a story on, on this wild journey they're having. Usually, I mean, I couldn't give two shits about any member of any royal family. I mean, I honestly don't care. But Audrey Hepburn is so charming as the princess that you want good things to happen to her and you want her to be safe and you don't want her to get screwed over. And Gregory Peck, uh, against character, plays someone who's actually quite noble and He's incredibly likeable as this, as this gentleman who's looking after her. It's very touching and the location photography in Rome is beautiful. And it's just a really... did I say it was charming? In a number four, The Wages of Fear. This co-French-Italian movie is the definition of tense. This tells a story of a bunch of Europeans who are stuck in a small desert town in South America who went to try and find money but are now just trapped there and are broke. Um, when an oil spill or leak happens, uh, four of them are given the opportunity to drive two trucks full of nitroglycerin uh, across rocky terrain to try and blow up and stop the leak. Uh, what happens then is this incredibly tense, nerve-shattering journey and at times, it's the opposite of speed. Again, this is a film where you have absolutely no idea what's going to happen next, and some horrible things happen. It's a brilliant film. Edge of your seat excitement, even when it's going slowly. In a number three, The Geisha, another Mizuguchi film from 1953. This tells the story of two geishas, uh, an older experienced geisha and her apprentice. Um, as usual with Mizuguchi's films, it shows just how men are trying to use them and abuse them. And this is really a story of two women's friendship and a sort of motherly connection that happens. Uh, the younger uh, woman is 
basically abandoned by her father who's too ill and broke and doesn't want to look after her. And so she turns to this older uh, woman, this geisha, to train her. What happens is, is eventually you see men trying to use and abuse them. I mean, geishas are primarily there for dancing and singing and culture and company. But then there are these men who are trying to ab physically abuse them. Um, the, there's a wonderful thing where the, the older geisha, a young, rich businessman, uh, takes a shine to her. And it, usually it's portrayed as, you know, when a man wants to sleep with a, wo with a woman and, and drag her into prostitution, it's usually some sort of horrible, oh, come here, lovely. And this is sort of a well-dressed, smart, younger man, younger than she is. And, of course, she still doesn't want to sleep with him. It's not a thing where it's like, oh, he's, that's fine. She doesn't want to do what... She doesn't want to do what she shouldn't have to do, and it, that's, that's, a, that's a wonderful thing about this movie. And the two women's friendship and connection get stronger as they face hardships. And this is a short movie, it's only about an hour and 24, but it packs a real emotional punch, and it's a fascinating insight into the life of geishas in the 1950s. In at number two, Monsieur Hulot's Holiday. This wonderful French comedy directed by the genius Jacques Tati stars Jacques Tati as Monsieur Hulot, um, his comedy alter ego. Clumsy, odd Frenchman who goes on a, on a beach holiday. The film is almost like a silent film in the ways that there's very, very, very little dialogue. But it uses sound in such an incredible way, uh, whether it be the sound of a door closing, unintelligible sounds of uh, speakers at a railway station. It's a sweet film, it's a touching film, it's a really funny film. I can't recommend it enough, uh, Monsieur Lowe's Holiday. And in at number one, Tokyo Story. Certainly not a laugh a minute. This film starts with a sort of very different type of holiday, uh, as an old Japanese couple uh, go to visit their children in Tokyo. They have an incredibly boring time, and in many ways, can be a bit boring to watch the, the beginning of the film where the children are too busy to really spend time with their parents and there's a lot of just kind of like uh, we should take our parents to the zoo can't do Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday and the grandparents going that's fine and there's a lot of that but as it goes on you feel more and more sorry for them and the second half of the film becomes so emotional uh, without pulling strings, it's not like a tearjerker, it's not like Steven Spielberg trying to make you cry as best as he can. It just, it packs a truthful punch and it's so heart-wrenching, heart-wrenching and upsetting, but truthful and, and delicate and honest and it's, it's a really human film. Counting down the top 10. In at number 10, Shame. In at number 9, Starlag 17. In at number 8, Ugetsu. In at number 7, From Here to Eternity. In at number 6, The Big Heat. In at number 5, Roman Holiday. In at number 4, Wages of Fear. In at number 3, A Geisha. In at number 2, Monsieur Hulot's Holiday. And in at number 1, Tokyo Story. That was my top 10 films of 1953. What are your top 10 films of 1953?